sure that the that the dramatic yes, zoom out is dramatic. Oh, we're all underneath our names. We're Very all important. Our names. That's oh good. no, because it's backwards. It's no, backwards. no, you're right. Sorry. No, that's backwards. good. You're right. Yeah. All right, oh. cool. Juliet's on the left, by the way. Okay, I'm so confused. I think so, I'll remember that though. Hi, everybody. It's the ASP.NET Community Standup. Let's see if anyone is watching right now. At the beginning of our shows, friends, there's usually a few people. And then it starts to speed up. 76 people watching now. That's, That's pretty plenty. Good. Is, that, is that plenty? <laughs> That's plenty know. to start. Remember, there, uh, everybody watches later anyhow. Thousands, okay. millions thousands. will watch. <laughs> yeah, so thousands. 94 people now. Okay, cool. That's pretty good. All right. Oh, look, people are already saying, look, there's three interns. I hope we enjoy their summer projects. Cool. Thank you, Hisham. All right, everybody. Uh, I am Scott, and this is John. Hi, say hi, John. Hello. And then hi, we John. have our uh, fantastic interns. Been here all summer long. Hi, everybody. Hi. hi. Cool. Um, we're going to go and do some quick um, John Galloway community stand-up links, and then we will introduce the interns, and they're going to show their code and what they wrote all summer. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Here we go. John, what's up? Awesome. All right. Well, so we shipped something. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is uh, ASP.NET Core 2.0 announcement post. I'm sure most of you have seen this, but if you haven't watched this video, this is really cool. This is Scott Hunter did a, a one hour long presentation on everything you need to know about .NET Core 2. Well, the highlights. So uh, there's this, and then the announcement post kind of describes how to update, uh, talks about razor pages, other, other new things. So kind of a must read post there. Another one that I've seen people referring to a good amount over the past week is, is this one. So this is guidance on uh, migrating from ASP.NET Core 1.1 or 1.x to ASP.NET Core 2.0. So kind of guiding you through the steps. And of course, things like project, but then it also takes you down into some kind of more, you know, like changes to the program CS and, and changes to kind of bootstrapping and compilation, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so definitely useful. One, one feature I saw um, that people may not know about is that it's easy to, or it's easier now to enable a QR code generation for authentication in ASP.NET Core. So you can set up two-factor auth and you can configure a QR code. What are they with, using to generate the QR code? So this is actually a JavaScript library, so it's done client side. No. Which is kinda, yeah, it, it works. Yeah. I, you know, so cool. I'd been going through, like I was going to recommend to them, like an SVG library that I'd found and stuff. But this is pretty slick. This is all done client side. So, and and they also talk about like the way they say it is we're using or this example shows this JavaScript library. If you want to yeah. do it differently, here's here's where you integrate. So cool, cool stuff. Here's a tweet I saw float by, I believe, yesterday. But I thought this is worth sharing. This is Chris Ross, and he said people are asking how to modify or add middleware after startup. So he shares this, just a simple repository. This is pretty slick. He's got, uh, he's registering a middleware that, that basically allows injecting middleware. Um, so he's got his, when you run this, you've got like a, a few links that'll say, you know, uh, in clear middleware or inject middleware. And the magic I believe is happening inside here. He's got this middleware injector options and it's just doing kind of, it's, it's swapping out the middleware as it goes. So this is this is a, a cool thing. I hadn't even really thought through, you know, how how you do that. So cool to see Chris sharing that. Um, this one, this is Damian Bowden. So we've shared his stuff over the years. This is a post that he first published and we shared right around 2015. Oh wow. And I'm calling this out because he has been really awesome about updating his, you know, like most viewed posts to the current stuff. So That's this is nice. That's more than I've done. This is a, this is great. So if if anyone watching, take a look at your you know your posts that have gotten some some uh, viewership, uh, you know some of your better stuff, and and do an update. People will very much thank you. And also really cool, he's got this change log at the top, you know, showing what's different. That's so, that's actually a best practice, I think. This, I totally agree. Very good stuff. So the, this is um the specific post is using MVC upload with um, SQL Server file table. So that is the file table storage inside of SQL Server. So, um, you know, that's also kind of a, a good practice here, directly uploading through the file table support. So. 
This one's neat. This one is, uh, I believe, David Cole, and he shared this. This is. It was cool how this started. I was watching on on Slack, and basically what happened is David Fowler gave a uh, kind of a clinic. <laughs> there were some questions on how how authentication works, and David Fowler popped in and explained things to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, talked about you know here's here's the different verbs available. Here's how authentication handlers work, etc. So David Cole went through and wrote up the notes and created this really cool post. I like this too. This this diagram is really nice, and this is actually. Oh, he did this all in SVG, so it's you know it's it's a nice wow. reusable, updatable thing. Yeah. How, so, how did he do that? I would just do it in Visio. I'm not very clever. He used he used Pencil Project. I, mm -hmm. I asked him. So yeah, so Pencil Project is a website where you can hook stuff up like this and you know grab some SVG right out of it. So so definitely this is kind of a nice uh, reference and a walkthrough on how authentication works. Uh, the last one I've got Andrew Locke. Uh, Popular favorite on, on the show. We've shared his stuff a lot. This is a recent one on cancellation token, tokens in ASP.NET Core controllers. So the idea here is if you've got a long running action, if you use a cancellation token, that can allow you to uh, to cancel it. So you can you can uh, so in his example, he's got a task that runs for you know seconds, ten seconds, and normally you're kind of stuck with that. If you set up a cancellation token, you can also use this thing called a, drop down one more, use a, a filter. Um, uh, so you can, you can basically go in, you, here it is, the exception filter. So you can catch cancellations using, using an exception filter. And so he kind of walks through his final result here is basically able to, you know, multiple requests to something that's running really long once you've got cancellation set up, it, it can uh, it can be canceled and the the next re, uh, request can start right away. So that's it for this week. I tried to keep it kind of short because uh, we've got exciting stuff from the interns to see. So. All right, good job, cool. Let us hear from our interns and maybe they can tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, Juliet. Yeah, thanks guys. Um, so I'm Juliet. Uh, I go to Stanford and I'm majoring in management science and engineering uh, with a strong interest in CS. Um, so I've been really excited about working on the UI and UX um, kind of aspects of our project, um, which is a blog template. And we'll tell you more about that later. Cool. Um, I'm Lucas. I'm also studying at Stanford. Uh, I'm studying economics and data science. and I've kind of participated all over on a variety of different features for our project. I'm Uma. I'm a rising junior at UCLA, and I study computer science. We're actually all rising juniors. Um, and yeah, it's been a great internship getting to do both PM and software engineering. So yeah. Let me ask a, a, an old person question. What is rising? What does that mean? So in the fall, we're going to be juniors <coughs> when we go back to school. Mm -hmm. In our third year. Yeah. Oh, cool. And luckily, we're all starting the school year like pretty late, um, not till late September. So we're here at Microsoft for another like just under three weeks. So. Is this your first internship? Um, my first internship at Microsoft, yes. But I had a different one at a different company last summer. Can you say that company's name, or is it like Google? <laughs> oh no, no, it's um, it's a really cool company. It's like a, it's a uh, an online grocery startup called Fields China, um, based in Shanghai. So oh, that was on. a really interesting experience for me. And you worked there. Yeah, I did, but oh, um, I cool. like I like how this internship has been. Uh, let's say much more. It's been much more technical, but um, I've learned a lot at both internships, and I'm excited that I have three more weeks of learning here. Very cool, Lucas and Uma. Did you work somewhere before? Or is this your first first first? Uh, um, last year, or I've I've worked in other places. Uh, in high school, I, I worked at a restaurant. Um, but that's not as relevant. And last year, I worked at a small consulting company uh, in Ohio. So no nothing, one's nothing wrong with working at a restaurant. Catering was my first job too, and that's a totally appropriate experience. It's a busy industry. It is. <laughs> you want? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I this is actually my first real job. Um, but yeah, last year I did um, like a web development boot camp over the summer and that was pretty high intensity. I learned a lot and now I kind of got to put all of that knowledge to use. So that was really nice. Cool. Did you all decide what project to build or were you told? So we were told from the beginning um, 
we were told that we had to build a template, or our goal was to build a template uh, for making web applications um, easier and faster uh, for developers. And so we kind of settled on the blog template. Um, mainly, uh, we thought that the blog template would kind of be relatable uh, for developers. And we also thought it would be something that a lot of people would be interested in kind of building out on their own. I think you can do a lot of things with a blog template, uh, whether that is writing a blog or, or, or doing your own website or different things like that. Um, so we settled on the blog template um, as kind of the most useful yeah, feature. for now though, like this is just kind of a starting point for other templates. Like uh, Mads, I think, is working on a photo gallery right now, so that might be available as a, a template later. We could have templates for e-commerce, etc. But we thought that the first one to knock out was the blog template, um, and we think it'll be like a really fun tool to just play around with. We had fun making it. We're still having fun improving <laughs> it. <laughs> That's cool. Did you? So, did you? Sorry, go ahead, John. Well, one of the things there's a there were updates to how templates work recently, and the the idea, the goal of it was supposed to be that it's easier to create a project template. I know in the past it it wasn't so easy. How did you find the experience of getting started building a project template? Um, so I I deal I dealed I dealt a lot <laughs> with uh, with sort of like um. I, to me, it was a little bit tedious. Um, the tedious process of making our like instance of a project into a template, um, and so like adding that template um, dot template dot config, like the template dot JSON file, etc., and like running a bunch of stuff in the command line, um, and like some things went wrong, and we had to like address them. And I'm still not entirely sure what happened, but we got it to work. Um, and then eventually, when I wanted to set up the templating stuff on this laptop, which is what we're using right now, um, like the learning curve was a lot uh, more manageable than it had been when I had first been um, doing all the templating stuff on my desktop. So it, I mean, it makes sense up to a point, but I would not call it user friendly. But it's okay. doable. Is our so we've seen your your repo. Are we able to share that with people watching? Can they? It's public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, public of repo. So, yeah, so you can actually. That's a good point. So while they are showing this, it's GitHub.com slash is it Venus interns? Yes. Slash yep. blog template. I just yeah, I just shared it in the in the chat here. All right, excellent. So yeah, so for folks that are listening, it's GitHub.com slash Venus interns, and we are in the blog template repository. Mm -hmm. And cool. we've also made it or tried to make it easy so that anybody who wants to contribute can look through issues. There's some that are up for grabs, some for first timers only. So hopefully that makes it uh, pretty easy to see. Yeah. Had any of you written your own blog before? Um, I actually have. I haven't added to it for a while because um, I feel like now that I'm in Seattle, Seattle's a cool place and all, but I used to like blog about uh, my trips abroad. So I started it when I did a URL trip after high school. And then I kept it up last summer since I was in Shanghai. Um, if you want to look it up, it's uh, juliets-journey.weebly.com. Weebly. Um, I know, I know, it's on Weebly. So <laughs> a lot of my inspiration for like what the blogging experience should be like really came from my experience using Weebly. And so honestly, like to start my own blog um, in the springtime of my junior year before I, I started it, before I went on my trip, um, I actually started a blog on WordPress, on Weebly, and like on Blogger. And I just used them for a little bit and decided which one I wanted. I know there are others out there now, like um, there's Medium and there's Ghost. Um, but I didn't like how I couldn't really configure the look of my page um, to like personalize it on medium um so i feel like just ownership of the look of your blog template is kind of a big thing um and so we've addressed that by using bootstrap for our template um and then also it's completely a different game when you can actually get into the code yourself um and change things uh using like in visual studio rather than I'm um, just using a platform like Weebly. I think the level of ownership is even deeper then. And obviously, like it's a great educational tool to learn um, something like Razor Pages and to learn how to code in, um, I mean, sure, a little bit of CSS, but mainly like C Sharp and HTML. And I wish I had had something like that as I was creating my blog, because then I could have like kind of killed two birds with one stone, been blogging and been learning about um, using Razor Pages. Not that it was out when I was starting my blog, but um, yeah, we hope it's a good experience. Is now a good time for the show and tell so, so we can ask questions based on what we see? Yeah, sure. of course. 
So let's share the screen. Ooh, cool. So we're just going to run an instance and see what it looks like. Um, uh, did we want to? Did we want to create? Um, did we want to show them how to make the .NET new template? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like maybe do it. Yeah, at the like command line first, and then show the code. This. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. That's on you. So, um, let's go to the command line, and then also in the background, I'm just going to have popped up our repo. So our README really nicely, we think documents how to create an instance of the template. Um, so we're not going to go through every single one of these steps because that'd take a little while. But um, we think it's pretty well documented on our readme, like what you can do. So we've set some things up already. Um, anyway, what we need to do now is. Oh, hang on. I want to just look at one thing there. Right in the middle there, you say .NET new, new 3. I've typed .NET new. Oh, yeah. I, and then like pulled it out of NuGet. I mm -hmm. assume yours is not yet published in NuGet. Instead, you're having us clone it into a folder. And then why are we saying new three instead of new? Yeah, correct. So we're saying new three because um, there's sort of a bug um, in .NET new right now that we actually discovered as we were trying to um, make this project into a template. Um, and so right now we're using new three, which will eventually become new. But new three is basically a recent but not yet shipped version of new. Um, is kind of how I understand it. Basically, it's what did we? It's what we needed to do to get this working. Because um, there was a a bug in renaming, um, like uh, renaming our project instances of like blog template dot one, blog template dot underscore one. It just wasn't the behavior wasn't as expected, um, and that had been fixed in new three versus new. So that's where we're using that for now. Um, yeah. Anyway, so. We have navigated to our templating repo, which we've downloaded from GitHub already um, from the templating team. And so now what we need to do is type .NET new 3-I, and then I can find my, actually, let's just, let's just do some arrows. Um, repos blog template, blog template master, if this should be right. Let's go. OK, great. So we see it's been successful because we have our shortening blog. We have our blog template installed in here. So then we're good to go and create an instance of the template by running Actually, <laughs> once again, do I ever learn from my mistakes? Um, OK, let's not call it my blog 2. What should we call this blog? My blog 3. I'd like to, oh, that's so lame. I just uh, thought we could new just, three. Amazing stand up super. Amazing uh -oh. stand up <laughs> crew. Super fancy pants. <laughs> amazing stand up crew. I don't know. That works. All right, let's go. Do you uh, have to change the output directory? Was your previous one in test blog also? Um, well, yes. The previous one was also, was also in test blog. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're just going to force this. Actually, it's, I don't know if it's. Space Probably need a space matter. between the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Very exciting. And, uh, so when this is published, I'll be able to go .NET new blog. If it. I'm um, correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Cool. Um, that's the idea. And okay. so we go into test blog. Stuff has been like overwritten. Um, we can open up blog template .sln. And let's close what we had before. We can just leave we it. We had something no, before. We can just leave it. It's okay, fine. we'll just leave it there. Load um, it up. Come on. So, yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Um, awesome. So, so, from here, we can run an instance. Run it. Yeah, she's running without debugging. Yeah. Good call. Perfect. All right. So this should show what our blog template looks like, or an instance rather of our blog template. That, as you see, should be renamed to what did we even name it? Well, Amazing we'll find out soon. Amazing stand up. Amazing stand up. Amazing stand up crew. Okay. 
And Takes a little while in the first go, but. All right, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yay! That's us. So Hooray. there, there's the name, the amazing stand-up crew blog. Um, so, like Juliet said, we we still have a little bit of time here, so we would love any input from anybody on any suggestions, anything they like or dislike about our blog so far. Mm -hmm. But um, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you want to log in. You can log in, and um, the easiest way to do this is then uh, you want to register a new user. So we'll go with the one that I've always used, which is very, very easy, uh, very easy to remember. Um, I'm curious. Uh, I think people who are watching would be interested. Uh, what languages did you all use before? And what was your opinion about C Sharp versus those languages and Razor versus those languages as you did your work? Yeah, so um, I have I had used um, C++ and C. Um, never used C Sharp before or Visual Studio, uh, but I found it very, very easy to use both. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, it might have been that I was working um, in Microsoft, surrounded by people who have used C Sharp for a long time, but I found it pretty easy. Um, it's also very similar to C or C plus plus. So to me, I think it was a pretty um, smooth transition. I don't know mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah. Well, so other than you didn't have to worry about memory, so you're just like making memory willy nilly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, that saved a lot of time and uh, stress. Yeah. I would just, yeah, I have about the same experiences like this <laughs> in terms of like our background and like what languages we knew before. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a pleasant experience. I think the reason I didn't use it before was that I just didn't use Visual Studio um, in the classroom um, and I have a Mac also. Um, but I don't know, I think that Uma would use like a variety of different languages. The first one I learned was in Python. And I know, Scott, we were talking like the last time you came and met up with us that it seems to be more beginner friendly um, because it's a lot more like um, English. But I feel like as the years have gone by, years, only a couple of years in college, um, <laughs> I, I guess I've realized that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I've realized that working with languages, like I st in college, we started out with C++ and then worked with C and then now we get to work with C Sharp. Um, I guess I've realized that even though a language like Python seems more beginner friendly, I like the fact that these languages like C Sharp, I feel like I have more control over what I'm doing and I know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's been like, it, it's been nice. Uh, it's It's not too difficult to figure out and yeah, it's good. One thing that's also worth pointing out in the from a context perspective so that the people who are watching understand the v Venus is the code name of the Visual Studio tooling team for ASP.NET. So when one of the dumb questions that I asked the young people were, did you use Visual Studio code? And the answer was, no, we did not because that's that's not the team. So right. you are all, this was your first experience in C Sharp and, mm -hmm. and Razor, but you're also using Visual Studio exclusively for it. And, and I, I thought, like, I don't know, the kids today are using Emacs or whatever. <laughs> How did you all find the whole, like, use an IDE uh, idea? I, I think it was cool. Since, so since you were here last week, I've started using Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, either, either works. I like Visual Studio Code a lot. Uh, so far, I, I haven't really um, had much time with it, but um, I think it's been pretty good so far. Um, in the past, I've used other things like uh, Eclipse um, and, and um, yeah, Eclipse, and, and this is far better um, than that uh, for me. Yeah, Qt Creator we also used in one of our other classes, and that... Oh, I cannot tell you how many times that crashed on me and just deleted my work all of a sudden.
But yeah, Visual Studio has been pretty great. I don't have um, as much experience with VS Code, so I'd be interested to um, see what that looks like and also to maybe use VS for Mac on my Mac. But cool. is that did you want to oh, wanna... finish showing the demo thing? I mean, they yeah, were walking sure. through. Sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, we probably should continue with that. So, so right here, we, we've already logged in as joe at joe.com. Um, we and say we want to write a new post, so uh, we figured we'll just take a little bit from um, Scott's blog and make that into <laughs> yeah. our <laughs> post. So we'll call this plagiarizing Scott. S Scott's post. Um, so clearly, we clearly, how intellectual property should be treated on the internet, and I respect that very much. <laughs> it's it's a great example. Um, and and here, so we've made it so that the excerpt gets generated um, automatically if you don't input anything. So we're just going to leave it like this and publish this one. And then um, we are going to, we can write a new post um, just so we have two examples. And we'll take one from John Galloway's blog. Right. Um, <laughs> and. Perfect. And so, uh, so you'll see the two posts here. Um, um, so the the cool thing, um, one thing that we used um, was identity. We well, for one, we used Razor Pages uh, for our, our entire blog, and the idea behind that was one, we didn't really know much about Razor Pages or MVC, which was uh, what was or I guess still is uh, being used for making web applications. So Razor Pages is kind of a little bit different in that um, each page has its own uh, controller, and, and you kind of work with, uh, it, it's like a, a little bit of a different setup. And I don't know, for me, I found it pretty easy uh, to work with because it's very simple to kind of know that you're working on this page, so this is the corresponding uh, controller to that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's all kind of in one place versus scattered around different folders <laughs> and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And if you learn to apply view models to, say, uh, make post summaries for your index page, it's very easy to see the parallelism and see how you would apply that same logic to the drafts page. Um, so it basically, it minimizes the need to reinvent the wheel. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I like Razor Pages. So, um, so on each post, we can also comment. Um, so I'll just add a comment. This is great. And um, and then as the administrator, um, so the idea is that the owner of the blog can um, like register and log in, and they're the only p person that can. Uh, essentially write posts, edit posts, uh, see their drafts, change their settings. And um, they can also um, so work with the comments. So as the owner, I could delete this comment, and then it just it wouldn't show up. Uh, here we go. It'll All right. All right. Okay. Well, it wouldn't show up. Um, there you go. And then, um, so there's that. And then the something really great that using identity gave us is this whole page of user settings. So um, oh, nice. we cool. kind that of, cool. we didn't have to make any of this. They were like, a, they're using Razor Pages made it easy because they're just kind of separate pages that we can uh, plug in and, and use if we if we want. So two-factor authentication, we haven't configured that. But it seems really easy to configure, uh, considering you know they gave us, so I'll show you the code. Um, they uh, using the wrong one. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that because you went and overwrote everything? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, so you should be just reloaded. That's fine. So, um, so it kind of using identity gave us um, this whole folder and a few other things, and so it's pretty easy to if if I want to use 
we're not using all of these pages, but a couple of them like uh, configuring two-step authentication are pretty easy to hook up, which was also um, really nice. So now Uma's going to show you guys how to uh, edit posts. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So if I want to go back to the blog and then I can go to Scott's post and say I'm not done plagiarizing, so I'm going to add some more. <laughs> um, here we go. And now I can, if I want, I can either save it as a draft or I can publish it based on whether um, I want to go back to a post, edit it, and I'm not really sure what exactly I want to add or something like that. So I can just save the draft and it'll show up in the drafts area. Um, and now it's not on the public blog anymore. Um, and yeah, and then if I want to go finish up my draft, I can go back, um, maybe, you know. Can you, I, I just think I saw maybe a, a, an issue. Go ahead and finish your post and then go to where you can comment. Oh yeah, we um, we have an issue with the comment counts that's, um, that's come up. So we have a couple of little bugs like this that um, oh, okay. we're working on yeah. fixing. But maybe um, you've noticed something we haven't before too. Yeah, so when we first started out uh, writing this template, we kind of referred to all of our posts with the slug, which was generated from the title. Um, and that kind of caused a lot of issues. Um, it was hard to you know, figure out how to make the slugs unique. And then we had this whole issue about um, when it's in the link um, and we changed the title, do we want to change the slug or not? Um, so we kind of left it up to the user. And in this case, I'm just going to say, yes, I'm going to update the slug, break external links. It's totally fine. And yep. Cool. And as you can see, um, I first we first made this post. And then when we edited it and saved it as a draft, we didn't want it to get bumped up back to the top. Because let's say someone's writing a post and they just want to change like one word or something. Um, we just didn't want it to you know come back to the top and become more relevant than something else. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's back at the bottom right here. Um, and yeah, is there anything else that we needed to show? Oh, that's cool. So um, do you so think that you'll put it in NuGet? I think that is the goal, yes. So Yeah, but um, right now the way you use it is the whole uh, .NET new 3 setup, which will probably eventually be .NET new, as new is fixed to look more like new 3. Um, so another thing that I wanted to show, though, was our use of um, Bootstrap. So we decided to use Bootstrap rather than just like editing the CSS because um, it makes uh, it makes the theming a lot more configurable. So like, let's say I wanted to go to Bootswatch and I wanted to use the Flatly theme instead of Journal theme, which I have right now. Personally, I like Journal the best, but like, let's say that you um, actually this works better in Edge. One of the few things that does. Um, Shade. Shade. <laughs> We're using Google Hangouts right now. Um, oh, wow. Well. OK, um, download bootstrap min.css. Enjoy your last Microsoft internship. <laughs> no. no, we love Microsoft. We love Edge. Don't put us on Edge. Um, you can click hide if you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hide? OK, OK, sorry. I was a little confused that I was trapped. Okay. Maybe I don't want to. OK, I'm unsure what I just did there. Um, so you can do save as and then pick yeah. the directory, yeah. That's better. So I'm just going to, I've actually already saved Flatly Bootstrap Min, so never mind about that. But anyway, assuming that but this I, is where you'd get it, right? Is that, yeah, that's where I'd get it. Um, and I'd go in here, and uh, I'd find, so I actually already have Flatly Bootstrap. So what's just kind of interfering is Journal Bootstrap, um, which we have. That That's the, um, the theme that we're using. So if I were to, like, Delete this. Um, that message scares me a lot, but this should be totally fine. Um, OK, it'll respond. There we go. So if we start this again without debugging, we'll see that the Flatly theme um, is in use. So let's check it out. Dun, dun, dun. So how did it pick mm -hmm. up that flat? Whoa, there you go. 
right? Right? And then the other <laughs> thing is we have a responsive design. So if you have like a small browser, if you're browsing on your phone, maybe, I mean, maybe our title's long for that. But anyway, um, you'll get a drop down menu um, and then you can see all your menu options. Very cool. So, yeah, so it, it works and um, you can grab a whole bunch of different bootstrap themes and make it totally customizable, which is good if, um, you know, we're hoping to get a lot of users um, for a blog template and having a lot of instances made. Um, and as more instances are made, we don't want them all to have the same theme. Um, so this was a nice way to kind of get around um, that. Awesome. Yeah. From a, um, we so, had some questions come in about tag helpers and this, uh, specifically wondering if you created any custom tag helpers when you were doing this. Good question. Oh, for sure. Um, that was, yeah, that's what I want. This one. Yeah, like a tag helper for comment or anything like that. Or had you thought about tag helpers as a possible refactoring? Oh, we did use tag helpers, actually. That was, yeah, that was a big thing, as opposed to HTML helpers. Um, made it a lot easier. Can you easier. give a good example of where you used a tag helper, maybe? I know I'm putting it in the spot a little bit. We use them in a lot of forms. Which one do you guys think is the index? Index? Okay. Um, I I feel like I feel like no, not there. I feel like new. So let's say you're writing a new post, um, and this is a place where we really employ tag helpers. So you can see right here, span ASP validation for post title class text warning, um, and that's I mean class text warning is just the style, um, and you know, you have input type text form control. Um, and yeah, the ASP stuff really helped um, with model binding, um, stuff like that, making sure our security was on track. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was very easy to kind of link it up like that. And then if you show them the .cshtml.cs file, um, it's. Um, we kind of just, um, it's there already, so it's very easy to use kind of the, the post.title uh, is very easy to um, change it or set it there on, on our respective methods. Yeah, yeah we put, we the you could see like the bind property on the post. Mm -hmm. um, and what's also really great about Razor Page is that you can see exactly which HTML page corresponds to the uh, cshtml.cs page. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, here is kind of the, yeah, go ahead. Wait, um, I, it says to go back, but I don't know, back where, back here? Yeah, Uma. Oh, yeah. yeah Uma, um, Uma, you drive. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, like I said, you can see exactly here, this is the HTML page, and this is corresponding kind of like a controller, um, and it's also hooked up to our models, which are over here in a separate folder. Where'd it go? Okay. Yeah, here. Um, yeah, and you can set all the properties, stuff like that. And um, what's we got to use a lot of the validation stuff, um, which made our lives a lot easier so that we didn't have to manually do that. Um, and yeah, if it's okay, I just wanted to run through kind of how like the back end is working. Um, so yeah, kind of an early design decision was to use um, XML for saving our data and you can see that over here. Um, you can see like everything is referred to in these tags. Um, and that's how we're saving data in our data store. Um, and we decided to use XML because uh, one of our mentors, Mads, you guys know him, um, he was telling us that people who already have blogs, a lot of them are using XML. So it would be easier for them to transition to our blog and move their um, data over if we used XML. But I mean, as we've been doing demos and getting feedback or realizing that it's better to not just have XML, but to also leave it up to the user, whether they want to use JSON, XML, any kind of database. Um, and so one of our goals is to make our data store, which is over here, uh, we want to make it abstracted so that people can implement the methods however they want, like the save post method. Um, I see. So you have like I file system and then you have physical file system, you'd have I blog data store and then you'd have an implementation that was XML and one that was JSON and one that was, I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we have the file system abstracted right now, which is great. So people can implement that however they want. But yeah, definitely a big goal of ours is to 
abstract the data store. Not sure if we'll get to it, but it would be really helpful. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. cool. And yeah. and like you said, you've called some things out as up for grabs issues. So if there are things you don't get to, these are things that you know maybe in the future you could have other people jump into too, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we actually want to show you guys um, like a little roadmap or. It's kind of a roadmap that we've created here. Um, so as you were saying, yeah, so we have some um, features that are tagged as up for grabs, or rather issues that are tagged as up for grabs. Some of them are bugs too. Um, and others are just like cool ideas for features that are maybe higher or lower on our priorities list that we may or may not get to. So we'd love some input and some help from the community in um, helping make this blog template even more awesome and continuing to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we when we first started brainstorming, we had a ton of ideas. So, and obviously, we're only here for about twelve weeks. So, there's only so much we can do. But we, I mean, we have so many ideas. We want to see them all. It's definitely done. been something really cool, though. In the past couple of weeks, as we've started to put these issues up, we've we've seen kind of we started getting feedback from people outside of the, the Microsoft community. Um, comment on a few um, features and bugs and, and kind of asking uh, how they can help out. So that's definitely been uh, something for for me kind of new to GitHub. And, and I think for most of us new to, really new to GitHub, it's been uh, something really awesome to see happen. Yeah. How did you uh, sometimes, uh, like for example, I'm going to go teach a class tonight on how to do, get started in open source. And I'm finding that even talented programmers struggle sometimes with pull requests and pushing updates to pull requests and code reviews and stuff like that. Had you all already had experience doing uh, GitHub? Because it seems very sophisticated here. You've got like <laughs> you got labels and you're you know you're all communicating with each other and you put in the next release for milestones. So we, yeah, help me understand that. Not really. <laughs> I think Uma had the most experience. I think Julia and I didn't have any experience. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was kind of, I mean, I think if, if you go back to, to the earliest pull requests and earliest issues, um, it's definitely <laughs> a bit more disor a bit disorganized. Um, but no, it, it's it's really cool kind of how we've we've started getting in this rhythm where, where we know what is a pull request, you know, what what needs to be a pull request, what needs to be drawn out as an issue, and then kind of referring to the pull request in the issue. Um, I, I don't know. I guess the easiest way to think about it is, is, is as if like every feature was a post-it note. Um, that's kind of how we've been looking at it, and every feature is a post-it note. And when that is finished, you know, when, when you complete that feature, um, you can ask, you know, for approval on your pull request, and uh, and then kind of go from there. But it's um, oh, it's true. definitely been uh, very. It's been a, a. It's not that complicated, I think, but I think it's kind of a matter of, of understanding the formalities behind GitHub yeah. and knowing when to make a pull request. Yeah, that was definitely a learning experience. Like even if like in school and stuff, I've used GitHub, but. I mean, like in a workplace, like Lucas said, there are definitely like formalities, kind of things that you need to keep in mind, um, things to that'll make your code cleaner, make your pull request more um, clear. So, yeah, we've I think we've all learned a lot, and oh, yeah. we're we've all like improved a lot. And one thing that was really good is that we've our uh, mentors and our manager and the three of us we've all been communicating really well since the beginning. So even though we we're kind of scrambling to figure out how all of this stuff worked. It, it, it happened really quickly. Yeah, honestly, huge shout out to Jimmy and Mads and Barry and like plenty of other people who aren't even formally our mentors, but have been really, um, really open to helping us with things. Um, so like people in the templating crew, like Sean and Mike, um, and you know, Jas and Taylor also on the runtime team, like all contributing. Um, everybody here has been super helpful and everybody who's come to our meetings and given us um, feedback has been totally awesome and we're excited to like get even more feedback and feedback not just from people at Microsoft but from people um, just in the community in general. We think it's great. Cool. Awesome. Wow. Well, thanks for giving us uh, a f almost a full hour of information. <laughs> um, no, it's good. It's a compliment. Thanks for thanks yeah. for paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and uh, unshare your screen. Sorry. All right. And we're gonna 
is Glenn still there? Because we have to do the dramatic oh, zoom gosh. out. <laughs> okay. We um, no, just go we're, to the left. We have an window. We yeah. can somebody else. Yeah, do yeah. This. I'm so stressed out right now. <laughs> <I think. laughs> is it moving this? Wait, it's oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. all right. Here you go. So scroll down. Yeah. Hey, hey, you go. switch hey. seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you noticed. Little bit of musical chairs. Glenn, yeah. Glenn is like saying, "Oh my goodness, I'm on my way." <laughs> he went back to work. Yeah. Yeah. It would be interesting to see. A couple people are offering. Yeah, everyone who's asking the links to the template. It's all up on on Venus interns. Mm -hmm. uh, people are suggesting maybe caching. Everyone, feel free to go up there and and put in some comments and some issues and uh, pull requests. Appreciated. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. good example. Another gentleman says maybe an XML importer so that we could import people's blogs. It'd be interesting yeah. to take oh, 50, yeah. 15 years of my blog and see if it uh, if it would scale. See if it scales. Yeah. yeah, we could plagiarize you entirely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we could make an actual .NET Hanselman import. <laughs> <laughs> is Glenn knocking on your door, or is he running? Uh, I think I saw him. Yeah, time. he was on. Yep, yeah, there, there he is. Hey. Right. Hello. Glenn is here. All right, cool. Can you help them with the dramatic zoom out? It's very important. What's up? Can you help us with the dramatic zoom out? I can. It's so dramatic. <laughs> Look, first we're going to zoom in. This. Right in, because we need to zoom in. You ready? Don't freak Uma out, though, because you're going to get right on her eyeballs. Dramatic <laughs> zoom out. It's so dramatic. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you.